Ladies and gentlemen, this is breaking news from John Solomon at The Hill. He is at the forefront of every major story. FBI steel story fa falls apart. This is, what, two hours ago. False intel and media contacts were flagged before FISA. So you have a situation where they already knew that even before trying to get a warrant on Carter Page and following up on a steel dossier that was complete nonsense that Clinton purchased and utilizing information from CrowdStrike from CrowdStrike that I was outsourced by the Democratic Party to say that the DNC was hacked by, by Russia. We already know that there were those false intel media contacts were, were already uh, flagged before the warrants. So the FBI swore, the FBI's sworn story to a federal court about its asset, Christopher Steele, is fraying faster than a $5 <laughs> souvenir t-shirt bought at a tourist trap. Newly unearthed memos show a high-ranking government official who met with Steele in October of 2016 determined some of the Donald Trump dirt that Steele had was simultaneously digging up for the FBI and for Hillary Clinton's campaign was inaccurate and likely leaked to the media. Well, it was all inaccurate. The whole thing was inaccurate. This is overt, blatant, in-your-face, transparent. The whole thing was a setup and a hoax, and they framed and set up President Trump. There was zero... This is okay. The D, let's say the DNC was hacked. That's not national security. DNC is a private entity. We learned that from the DNC fraud lawsuit that nobody on the left who claims to, like, fight the system on oligarchy, man. They're not bringing that up. Why? Why have all the people who disparaged me on the left not bring up the DNC fraud lawsuit? Because they can't bring it up. Because at the end of the day, when Clinton runs, and she's running again. Gee, she's in New Hampshire. What a coincidence. That's bizarre. She's speaking to Dartmouth students just like she was in 2016. That's bizarre. She's running again. Why do you think they framed and set up Trump? Because you can't possibly run for president if you're Madam Cyberhack based on your accomplishments, which are very few and far between. Actually, in terms of chaos and mayhem, her accomplishments are grandiose. But in terms of actually, like, you know, good things for people, can you name one from Adam Cyberhack? Can you name one? Voting for Bush's counterinsurgency conflicts? What? Um, helping cause Libya to become a failed state? With a, with a failed NATO intervention? What? What? Her prior statements that would be deemed not only racist today, but, like, would have derailed any candidate's campaign, especially Republicans today. The crime bill in 1994, that was fantastic. What 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 great thing did, did the Clintons, both of them, achieve? Well, Bill, possibly you could say there's some good things about his presidency. But Hillary? Not only has her entire political career been riding the fumes of Bubba Bill's um, tenure in office. But she's been constantly engaged in scandal. Now she's, they've, they completely uh, fabricated the Trump-Russia investigation. They completely covered up all her criminal activity. Her servers, we know, they tried to infiltrate, people tried to infiltrate, governments tried to infiltrate her servers, and from Louis Gomer and the Inspector General Charles McAuliffe, China actually did. But just recently there was a story about Uma Abedin and Justin Cooper. How Uma Abedin was so surprised that she wrote, OMG, they're trying to infiltrate Clinton's servers. By the way, the servers outside the U.S. government had top secret intelligence. How was she able to transfer to receive emails to send emails to store top secret and special access program intelligence. Gee, you think William Barr is going to find out? You think William Barr doesn't know what I'm about to read you now? The concerns were flagged in a typed memo and in handwritten notes taken by Deputy Assistant Dir uh, Secretary of, S of State Kathleen uh, Kavalik on October 11, 2016. So the State Department already knew. State Department had concerns about the Steele dossier. And the FBI knew. And this is before they got 
Her observations were recorded exactly 10 days before the FBI used Steele and his infamous dossier to justify securing a FICE Foreign Service Intelligence Act warrant to spy on Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. So when the wonderful and intelligent Anna Kasparian of the Young Turks, when she says, well, there was nothing, there was, there were no, there was no illegal activity, how do you think they got the, the warrant to spy on Carter Page? Through an illegal act? What, do you think anyone on the left would say, oh, yeah, if Trump uh, purchased a dossier <laughs> and the State Department uh, informed the FBI that the dossier was nonsense, but the FBI decided to investigate Clinton based on this dossier, even though they were already informed beforehand, 10 days before they got a warrant to investigate Clinton or someone around Clinton to then frame Clinton. Do you think they would... They would be okay with that? Of course not. If you flip the script, if the tables were turned uh, completely, and what was done to Trump was done to Clinton, they would put their thinking caps on and they would say, oh my God, this is uh, just is craziness. So, it's important to note that the FBI swore on October 21st, 2016 to the FISA judges that Steele's, quote, reporting has been corroborated and used in criminal proceedings. It, it was never used in criminal proceedings. It was never corroborated. The judges were deceived. That is a criminal act by James Comey and Strzok and Peter, and Peter Page <laughs> and uh, Lisa Page and Peter Strzok and James Baker and all of them. They're all, they were all part of the process to utilize this dossier purchased by Clinton. The whole thing was a setup. The whole thing was a scam. And the FBI has determined him to be reliable. He was never reliable and was, quote, unaware of any derogatory information pertaining to their informant. What? Who simultaneously worked for Fusion GPS, the firm paid by the Democratic National Committee and the Clinton campaign to find Russian dirt on Trump. In a typed summary, the State Department wrote that Steele told her the Russians had, const had constructed a, quote, technical human operation run out of Moscow targeting the election that recruited emigres in the United States to do hacking and recruiting. Okay. Steele told her, so Kavalek wrote that Steele told her, so Christopher Steele was already interviewed by also the State Department. Interesting. She quoted Steele as saying, payments to those recruits are made out of the Russian consulate in Miami. <laughs> There's no evidence of that, according to a copy of her summary memo obtained under open records litigation by the conservative group Citizens United. Kavalik bluntly debunked that assertion in a blanketed comment. It is important to note that there is no Russian consulate in Miami. <laughs> oh, my God. This is great. Christopher Steele says that payments from the Kremlin were made out of the Russian consulate in Miami to hack the election. Oops. Uh, it is important to note there is no Russian consulate in Miami. <laughs> That's so awesome. So this this woman, uh, Kavalek, I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. She's awesome. Deputy Assistant Secretary of State, Kathleen Kavalek. Kavalek, two days later, and well before the FISA warrant was issued, forwarded her typed summary to other government officials. The State Department has redacted the names and agencies of everyone she alerted. It. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Why would you redact the names of people that knew that the whole thing was a scam? Hmm, that's bizarre. And then you have, like, you have, uh, you know, Jerry Nadler. We need to see the redact on redacted. Like, wh what, you think they're hiding? You think, like, in, the, in part of the unredacted information... There's information saying, oh, yeah, and we're going to indict Trump. But it was redacted, so we couldn't see it. Now they're talking about a constitutional crisis. Oh, it's a constitutional crisis, says Nancy Pelosi. Oh, my God, the Constitution. It's a crisis. Well, what's the crisis? William Barr was willing to testify to the House. Those committee lawyers could have simply passed notes to the, to the, to the House, uh, Democrats, House Democrats and have the House Democrats read the questions. No, no, no. We had to have five or ten minute or half hour sessions with actual lawyers. So that's not, why would he subject himself to that? He had, he's already, he doesn't even have to give the actual report. 
He's only he didn't even have to give the report. And Trump didn't in, invoke executive privilege up until very recently. They did not have any evidence of Trump Russia. Then they're saying, oh, well, he obstructed justice. And by the way, I love Judge Andrew Napolitano. I love him. The guy is like an insp- was one of my inspirations. Why do I speak about Clinton's emails all the time? He was one of my inspirations. The Daily, Beat, the Daily Beast is quoting him all the time on obstruction of justice. I respectfully disagree on that, but he knows a great deal about the law. Obviously, he's a judge. But Judge Napolitano was saying that Clinton not only should have been uh, indicted, but also obstructed justice and also transferred top secret and special access program intelligence outside the U.S. government. One of the biggest scandals in American history, he was saying. The Daily Beast and others like, you know, um, Lawrence O'Donnell and MSNBC, they're like, we have this Republican saying this or the conservatives like, well, you should see what he was saying about Hillary Clinton, which is 100 percent correct, 100 percent correct. But there's but in terms of obstruction, so that they don't quote that, okay? I mean, the ins- a lot of the inspiration that I get, that I've gotten, to always bring up the Clinton email scandal was from Judge Napolitano because his coverage was so amazing when it was all going down. Um, but, I mean, and then, but they won't quote him on that, the Daily Beast. But anyway, the Daily Beast is its own. It's like an extension of the DNC, as is the Washington Post and New York Times. Um... Did I mention Hillary's running again? She's in New Hampshire. Okay, she's running. So when it happens, I mean, let everybody know right now, H.A. Goodman is calling it Hillary's running again. I said she would lose in 2015. This is before the Russians hacked the DNC. Yeah, right. Long before that. But here we have, let's just, um, all right, so let's, let's, All those concerns would weigh against Steele's credibility and should have been disclosed to the judges under the honor system that governs the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. Kavalek's handwritten notes clearly flagged in multiple places that Steele might be talking to the media. June reporting uh, reporting started. She wrote, NYT and WP have, she added an apparent reference to the New York Times and Washington Post. The whole thing was the intelligence community or whatever, not a community, it's about seven or eight, Really corrupt people, including Strzok, Comey, McCabe, Brandon Clapper, all these people. Baker, all these people. We'll see how corrupt James Baker is. He's under criminal investigation. That guy should flip and sing like tomorrow. She'd just go to bar and say, look, I'm willing to testify on everybody. He was the top FBI legal counsel. But all of these people are going to be indicted and charged either before or after the election, possibly many of them before the election. Clinton will eventually be charged after she loses to Trump in 2020. She's running again. Um, Trump lawyer Michael Cohen traveled to Prague. Never happened. Trump campaign chairman owed the Russians $100 million and was a go-between between uh, go-between between uh, go-between from Russian Vladimir Putin to Trump. Nope. Trump advisor Carter Page met with senior Russian businessmen with ties to Putin. Um, That never happened. The Russians secretly communicated with Trump through a computer system. That never happened. So, special counsel Robert Mueller's report released dispelled all those wild theories while hardly mentioning Steele except for a passing reference to his dossier being unverified. Of course, they didn't mention... They didn't mention... um, they didn't interview Mifsud, Joseph Mifsud, or Natalia Vasilnitskaya. And oh, by the way, um, they didn't mention, even make mention of um, Fusion GPS Alexander Downer, who was supposed to have told the FBI that Mifsud spoke to Papadopoulos about the Russians and Clinton's emails or the DNC emails. It's oh, The whole thing is... Poorly written fiction. My son is a good person, Mr. Trump. Oh, so this is a different article. So now they want uh, Trump Jr. And I have no clue why um, the Senate is is making the Senate Intelligence Committee is making um, Trump Jr. testify. That's an interesting one, also. 
maybe to finally put everything to rest. Who knows? Um, there's so, okay, so Don Jr. testifies intriguing. Oh, here we go. Subpoena caused a rift in the GOP. Why would you want... And it's just unbelievable, like, so the Senate intelligence, that whole thing, that's how you have a solid sky, it wasn't even interviewed. He did nothing wrong. There was nothing wrong. And then they're like, well, he knew about Trump's tower. So what? Who cares? There was no collusion. There was, he wasn't working. I mean, if we're talking about contacts now, Bill Clinton met with Vladimir Putin. Does that mean anything? Is that anything at all? I mean, is that any? Does that is that worth anything at all? He met with Vladimir Putin to speak about golf. Oh, that was uh, Loretta Lynch to speak about golf brags and grandchildren. Oh Lord! So this is coming out now. This is huge. This is evidence that James Comey committed a crime. And Steele and, and, and Andrew McCabe, all of them. Steele eventually was fired by the FBI for leaking to the press. But that did not happen until November 1st, after the FISA warrant was secured. Steele's admission of media contacts on October 11th, well, they all knew. They all had their own media contacts. Uh, and the mere existence of his meeting at the State Department likewise violated his confidentiality agreement. Okay. If the State Department and or could figure out that Steele was a partisan, paid by a political client facing an election day deadline, to broadcast raw intelligence. It wasn't raw. And John Solomon is amazing. He's not, I'm not talking about the way he wrote it. The Democrats and Comey are like, well, it was raw intelligence. It was about as raw as like a rotten, um, I don't know what. There was nothing raw about it. And there was no intelligence, but he was paid. You can't just write a bunch of nonsense and say it's intelligence. Broad, uh, broadcast raw intelligence that in some cases probably was false. The FBI should have done the same before it ever envisioned taking this evidence to a FISA court. There you have it. William Barr knows this. William Barr knows this. He knows all of this. He knows all of this. He knows all of this. So this was... Probably the biggest. The more you dig oh, in here, Lord. you see that. That was Jim Jordan, actually. <laughs> um, the more you, I'm repeating him, this was the biggest public relations spin of all time. One of the biggest. It was two years of Trump might have colluded with Russia to hack the DNC to inform the country that Bernie Sanders was cheated. Now Clinton is saying every single day on her speaking tour. And the rebuttal is, well, nobody's buying tickets. Well, a lot of tickets were purchased at Dartmouth. There was a standing ovation. Okay. Um, it doesn't even matter. Also, she, Clinton, the, the Democratic Party is an extension of Bill and Hillary Clinton. That's it. That's it. There is no Democratic Party. There's no political party called Democrats. Or the Democratic Party. There is none. It's an extension of Madam Cyberhack. That's it. Um, and when it happens, we'll know why Trump was framed. This is not it. Clinton wasn't. Clinton wasn't like, hey, you know, 2016. We'll try, and if and if that doesn't happen, no. It was 2016. If that doesn't happen, 2020. And I'm telling you, she's probably of the mindset. If that doesn't happen, 2024. And there will still be people. Like, there will be, obviously, a smaller, uh, you know, her base of support will be decimated by then, but she'll probably already be indicted because she's committed major crimes. Major crimes. She used servers outside the United States government, found ways to transfer top secret and special access program intelligence onto those servers. Then she deleted 30,000 plus emails without government oversight. What do you think were... We're supposed to trust that it was yoga. And then the Washington Post doesn't put that in a running tally of lies told by Madam Cyberhack. So, but the, the point here is they already knew, the State Department knew that Christopher Steele and the Steele dossier was, it was full of nonsense. That he was, not, he was full of nonsense. 
and that the Steele dossier was complete garbage. The FBI still, they were informed that it was not only not verified, that there was no Russian consulate in Miami. <laughs> so all of these grandiose like claims, oh, you know, operatives were paid by the Russian consulate in Miami. Oh, my God. Well, that there is no Russian consulate in Miami. It was obvious. The whole thing was, the whole thing not only was false, but she, but they purchased, Hillary purchased the dossier. If Trump had purchased the dossier, what do you think they would be saying now? So, ladies and gentlemen, my Patreon is below if you want to support in the pinned comment, if you want to support my voice long term. Your support is greatly appreciated. Check out my writing in The Federalist, The Daily Caller, The Jerusalem Post. That's in the pinned comment. And also, you'll see in the pinned comment, get Nick DiPaolo, comedian and just political analyst. He's awesome. He is awesome. He's a great, great comedian as well. Um, get him to 100,000 subs and then to a million subs. He's amazing. Subscribe to his channel. Ladies and gentlemen, John Solomon today just proved that the <laughs> even the State Department was involved in debunking the Trump-Russia myth, and I wrote the book, Debunking the Trump-Russia Myth, in, in 2017, along with but her top secret emails and but her deleted emails. But just, it's unbelievable. Today we found out that the FBI knew the Steele dossier was nonsense. They still used it anyway. That is a criminal act. You can't do that with FISA judges. Thank you so very much.